Hey everyone, and welcome to another night of Kids Church or Kruger Kids. Sorry, tonight we'll be making those jumping frogs we told you about last week and hearing about this guy called Moses and how he stood out to God. But first, drum roll, please. We need to let you know how many marshmallows were in the jar this week. There were, how many do you think, Daryl? I think there were 52. Uh, sorry, you were wrong. I thought 64. But there were actually 43 marshmallows squeezed into that jaw, jar. Yikes, don't eat them all at once. That would hurt your tummy. If your name is on the screen right now, that means that you are our winner and we'll be in touch to drop your marshmallows off to you this week. Definitely don't eat them all in one go. You'll feel really ill. There were some very, very calculated guesses. I heard a few people turned or pause their video and try to count them on the screen. That was a good idea. I should have done that. Well done to everyone who entered. And hopefully there'll be some more challenges to come later as well. Yeah, I hope so. Now, we've been following along with the story of Moses for the last couple of weeks. We've learnt how God protected him when he was a baby and how God spoke to him from a burning bush and gave him a really important job to do. Tonight, we're going to check out what happened next for Moses. This is the most exciting part of the story, but also ooh, a little bit creepy. Mm, that's right. Tonight's video clips are a little bit different for the two age groups. We'll explain a little bit more after you've watched them. The links for the clips are in the description above. For the Kids Club families, head over to the Pursue God's Kids Club clip. <laughs> uh, that's that tongue twister. <laughs> called Pharaohs and the Plagues. Our hot families can head over to the Pursue God clip for youth called When Following God. Thanks. We'll see you back here after you've jumped back from those links. So the clips tonight talked about the same situation, but kind of focused on different parts of the situation. The hype kids focused on how Moses felt so let down and alone when Pharaoh didn't listen to him the first time that he told him to let God's people go. It's tough when you try to do what you think, what God wants you to do, and it didn't go the way that you think, thought, or think it will or thought it would. But God is still there with us, teaching us and helping us to trust him one more time. The Kids Club clip focused on how God then sent 10 plagues on Egypt to prove to Pharaoh that God is real and that he is in control. God turned the water into blood. Ooh. There were frogs everywhere. Tiny insects and animals got Ooh. sick and people also got sick as well. And then there was this epic hailstorm. Ooh. It went dark for a couple of days. And then finally the oldest son in each family died. My goodness. It was a really, really tough way to learn or learn to listen to God. Absolutely. But... We want to see what you guys remember from the videos tonight. I hope you were paying attention. Are you ready for some questions? Let's do this. Remember, we'll pop the questions on the screen for you and you can pause the video to chat about the answer. When you're ready to hear our answers, hit the play button, button so you can compare what you thought to what we thought. I think I'm under the firing line tonight, so I hope I was paying attention. All right, Cara. Okay, question one. What message did God give Moses to share with Pharaoh? Okay. Now, that was at the start of the clip. Oh, I remember this one. Let my people go. Yeah, nice one. All right, question two. What was Pharaoh's initial response to Moses? Was it God's response to Pharaoh's disobedience? Or what was God's response to Pharaoh's disobedience? Sorry. Um, now I remember the first part. Um, Pharaoh's initial response was, get out of town. No way. I'm not letting all those people go. What? Who will I have to build my all the things in the town? What was God's response? Well, I think that was the ten plagues. It was not a happy consequence for Pharaoh when he was disobedient. It resulted in sickness and the crops dying and 
Even Pharaoh's own son died. All right, question three. Have you ever been mad at God over something that happened in your life? Explain what happened. Hmm. I'm sure we can all answer this one. There have definitely been times in my life where I felt like I was doing what God asked me to do, um, but it didn't turn out the way that I thought. I felt unjustified, like the time I studied really, really hard for a test at school and I thought that I had done my, you know, all the right things and it turned out I still failed it because I'd studied the wrong things. And I thought that I deserved to get much better than I did, but you know what? It was a lesson to me that I had to study more and um, maybe pay better attention to what the test was going to be on. There's a lot of times when we feel like um, things happen differently to, to um, the way we expect, but God teaches us that he is still there, he is always with us, and that we need to trust him because things always work out for the best. But if we are disobedient to God, Remember, there are consequences for our actions, sometimes happy ones and sometimes sad ones. Would that mean the plagues are going to hit our house? Thankfully, no, no plagues have hit my house yet, but there is always a consequence for doing the wrong thing. Thankfully, God's very forgiving, not just once but a thousand times over. All right, last question. All right. I'm ready. Question number four. This is the hardest one. How can, or maybe it's not the hardest one, but it could be. How can following God make you unpopular? Mm, yep, good question, Daryl. I think sometimes the things that God asks us to do are not the things that we want to do, or they're not the things that our friends are doing, or um, every, it seems like everyone else is doing it. It doesn't seem like such a bad thing. But like we talked about, sometimes there, there, there are consequences for our actions, sometimes good, sometimes not. We need to really look to God for the right thing to do. If all our friends are doing the, un, the, uh, the popular thing against what God wants us to do and we go along with that, we've got to be prepared for some um, consequences. On the other side, when we do look to God and trust him and do the unpopular thing because it's what God asks us to do, there can be some really great rewards for that. And God, um, yeah, God's really proud of us for doing that. Thanks, Daryl, for those questions. There were some tough ones yeah, there. Yeah, there were some tough ones. And thank you for your answers and the honesty. It's good to hear. But I think it's a time for games. Are you ready for some games? I love games. All right, I'm ready to play as well. We've got Darby and Beth hanging out in their place and ready to fill us in for this week's fun. Woohoo! Hi everyone, whether you are watching on Facebook or YouTube, it is great to have you joining us tonight. I would like to give a shout out to Liam Evans and to Charlotte De Silva. I cannot wait to see you guys on a Friday again. So tonight we are going to be making racing frogs. I am really looking forward to doing that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But you know who frogs were not fun for? The Egyptians living in Moses' day. In Exodus 8, it tells us that there were frogs in their houses, there were frogs in their beds, and there were even frogs in their ovens. There were frogs everywhere. Now, I like frogs, they are really cute, but that is disgusting. So, let's get on to making our jumping frogs. What you're going to need is a piece of paper, and make sure you're listening carefully and watching these instructions. Um, remember, if you have any trouble, you can pause the video or you can rewind it and watch again to make sure that you get this right. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make these now. Alrighty, so we are going to make our frog, our jumping frog. All right, so here's an example of one that I've already made. I'm just going to get him to jump out of there. All right, so... If you have uh, origami paper that is like nice and square, you can skip ahead a little bit. But if you have an A4 size piece of paper, you are going to want to do this with it. So you're going to, you can see I've already folded it. So I've got this nice diagonal line here. So you're going to fold it over 
make sure you have a nice point here and then fold it down nice and flat and then this bit you're going to turn it over this bit you fold down like that make sure it's nice and flat there and then we'll turn it over we'll just crease that back and forth a couple of times you can cut along that line if you want to but I prefer to just rip it I think it makes it a little bit easier all right so then what we're going to do we've got one line here from where we've folded it already I'm going to turn it over and put these two points together so that we have an X in the middle of our paper. Press it down nice and firm. The flatter your lines are, the better your frog will be. Okay, nice and flat. And open it up. See, now you've got a big X on your paper. And then we're going to turn the paper over and make these two sides fold up here like this okay and again nice and flat okay now open it up now you've got an x with a line through it okay lift up the middle and push in the sides okay so at first you're going to have like that like a half triangle and then you push in the other side and you'll have a full triangle. So I'm just going to show you one more time because that can be a bit confusing. It's pushing the middle up and that bit here in. That didn't work so well. You can do both sides at once as well. And then you have a triangle with like these flappy bits here, right? So you should have four legs or whatever on the triangle. All right, then we're going to fold the little leg down here up to the top like this and so we have a triangle on our triangle and then the other leg I'm gonna fold that up as well press it down all right so there you've got a square in your triangle right if if at any point you need to pause this video and go back and rewatch or anything like that feel free to do so okay so once we've done that we're going to fold this bit here over and press it down so we're folding it to the middle and then it makes like a half diamond all right and then we're going to get this one i'm going to fold it over to All right, there we go. So now we have a whole diamond. All right, now in here, you're gonna pull that bit up and squash it down on itself so that it lines up. Again, nice and flat. It gets a bit hard depending on what paper you have. Um, it can get a bit fat and it makes it hard to squash it down, but really the more it's squashed down, the better it's going to be. So now we're folding this other one here over. And squash it down. All right. Squash it like you mean it. All right. Now we're going to turn it over. So we're going to get the whole thing. It should have these nice little ears or whatever you want to call those. And then we're going to turn it over. And there you go. They're just poking out the top there. All right, now what we're going to do is fold this whole half of the triangle over on top onto the other half of the triangle and squash it down and then open it up again. And that just gives us a center point. All right, so we just did that so that we had a nice center line so that we can fold this leggy bit. So we're not folding it up this time. We're folding it to the middle line still. So that's why we've got the middle line so that we can fold it to the middle but we're folding it down so that it makes a point at the bottom. Okay, squish it down. All right, and then the other one, you're gonna fold it to the middle as well. Okay, 
Okay, and then we are going to again fold it to the middle. So this guy in to the middle. Nice and flat. And then the other one into the middle. Again. This is a bit of a finger workout. Really get to squash it down. Yep. All right. Then this bit's a little bit weird. So we're going to open it up. All right. And then we've got a middle line here. Can you see that? Yep. So that middle line there, we're going to fold this outside bit here. So imagine it is two halves of this one leg. So here's one half, here's the other half. We're going to fold this half in half to the center line that you just made. Just trying to see my center line. There we go. Is that it? And squash it down. All right, and then this half of the leggy bit, I'm gonna fold to the middle as well. There we go. Squash it down, and then you're gonna fold the whole thing in half again. All right, and so then you've got like one, two and then a big long bit folds there that you can see. All right, now the same on the other side, put it out flat, fold this half in half again to the middle point that you'll have there, squash it down, and then this half in half, and squash, 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 Squash. All right, and then this, you can fold it in half again, like that. There we go. So now we have like, I don't know, two rocket flames coming out of the bottom of our frog. All right, squash it, squash it, squash it. And then we're gonna turn it over. All right, hopefully your frog looks like this. If not, go back and check what you did <laughs> or didn't do. All right, and then we're going to Fold it, now it's not exactly in half. We're gonna fold it so that this bit, the nose of the frog, just has a little bit poking out. See how he's just got that bit there and then he's just got a little bit of nose poking out the top. So you're gonna fold that. And this bit's a bit hard. You're gonna try and make sure that in here it stays nice and flat and it doesn't all crumple up on itself. I'm not using really thin origami paper like I suppose I should be. So it makes it a little bit hard, but that's okay. It'll still turn out pretty good. And really, really squash it down. I don't know, maybe you've got something lying around that you can use. I've got some tape here lying around because we're moving. So it's just there on the edge. I'm gonna use that to squish it down and really make it nice and flat. All right, there we go. Cool. And then it looks like that. You got this bit that comes down. Okay, so we're gonna fold this bit, the bottom half of the frog, this half here. We're going to fold it down in half. Okay, so this bottom bit of the frog here, fold it down in half. Okay, and again, a bit hard. There's a lot of paper in between there, getting my tape again, and squash, squash. Don't use anything that's glass, please. Be safe. Ask your parents before you do it. Alright, so there we go. Now you just turn it over. And you can lift the head up a little bit. And it makes it just bounce a bit more nicely. And then you just kind of tap on this, this bit here. You've got to kind of, yeah. It takes a bit to figure it out, but don't... That's the wrong problem. Don't be discouraged. <laughs> discouraged. You'll get there. It's yeah. And then you can have fun, man. I've made this thing do backflips. Look at that. I did a full, full backflip before. So enjoy. All 
All right, so there you go. There is your jumping frog. So you can see if you can make your frog a stunt jumper or you can challenge someone else in your family to make a frog and see whose can jump the furthest or the highest. And if you're feeling really creative, you can paint your frog, you can put glitter on there. Just go crazy, have fun with it. So pause the video and have your fun and then head back here for our second activity. All right, see you guys later. Hi guys! First I would like to shout out to Olivia and Addison. Hope you are watching this group of kids tonight and um, play the games along the way with us. How did your frogs go? We would love for you to write in the comment how far you managed to get your frog to jump. We will even give you a bonus entry into our inner term prize draw just for let us know. So, tonight's second game is called Pharaoh's Opium. You need to make a space that is big enough to move around in safely. So, pick up any toy on the floor or anything that lay around the floor before you play this game. This game is a little bit like the ship to shore. The, is the Israelites were caught between Pharaoh in Egypt and their freedom. They were waiting for God to set them free from being slave. But Pharaoh just wasn't listening to God. So if I say Pharaoh, you need to run to this side of the room. And if I say freedom, you need to run to the other side of the room. And I'm going to add in a few of the plague as well. So if I say fly, you have to stand still and swat the fly. If I say frog, you have to squat down like a frog. If I say darkness, you cover your eye. And if I say blister, you scratch your arm. Are you ready for this game? Let's get it started. Pharaoh. Freedom. Blister. Darkness. Frogs. Flies, darkness, blister, freedom, faro, flies. Well, how did you go? Maybe this time I make a little bit faster. Hopefully you can catch up. Flies, frogs, darkness, blister, faro. Flies, frogs, darkness, faro, blister. Whew. Well done, everyone. Remember, God wants to listen to his instruction and follow him. Just like you were listening to my instruction tonight. We know things won't always be easy, but we also know that it's important to do things God's way. Back to you, Kara and Darol. Darol, oh. Oh. oh my goodness. Darby, that was really hard. I got so confused. Scratching, squatting, squatting, Darby. You know what to do. Oh but my goodness. How did your frogs go? Oh. How did everyone's frogs go? We'd love to hear from you. You can write them down in the comments and, um, or you can make the comments how far you actually managed to get your um, frogs to jump. We'll even give you a bonus entry into our end um, term draw prize for letting us know how you went. Oh, I'm really keen to see 
My frog, I think it's got a bit of a funny back leg and it didn't go very far. Hopefully your, your frog's a little bit better than mine was. Daryl's ended up winning, unfortunately, but maybe we can give it another go, Daryl. Mm. And just a reminder that if you do put your entry in, there's a $20 at the end of the terms prize that you can actually $20? win. $20? $20. That's heaps. If you want to earn that bonus into the draw, just remember that you can tell us in the comments below how far your frog jumped. How far your frog jumped. Okay. All right. Well, it's been a really great night tonight, guys. Thank you so much for joining in with us. I really enjoyed the story on Moses. It's one of my favourites. And I know that that Ship to Shore Ferret of Freedom game is one of your favourites, guys. So I hope that you joined in with that one. Hope you can join us next week where we'll be finishing up our series on Moses and how God rescued the Israelites from Pharaoh. There'll be plenty more fun and laughter then, and we hope that you will join us for it. Thanks so much for joining us at Kruger Kids tonight. We're missing you guys so much. Our Friday nights are so boring. We hope, we'd love for your family to join us on our YouTube channel or our website, kruger.org.au. It's on the screen right there. Yep. Uh, for our services on Sunday morning, you can find them there as well. The services go up at 8.30 in the morning, but just like our Kruger Kids videos, you can watch them anytime that suits you. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the middle of the night. Oh, wait, maybe not in the middle of the night. Maybe ask mum first or dad. Um, but whatever time suits you. But you can wear whatever you like. Maybe I should have worn my pyjamas. Yep, even your pyjamas. Mm. But... Before we go tonight, we're just going to finish with some prayer. Pray for everyone. I think prayer is good for everyone. So let's just have a talk to um, God. All right, everyone close your eyes as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just so thankful that you're always with us. And um, there's always going to be trials. There's always going to be tests. And, Lord, I just pray that you'll help us and guide us to make sure we choose the right things to do, Lord. Make the right choices. Lord, sometimes it's not easy to do that. But, Lord, we know that with you, all things are possible, and we thank you for that. Lord, we're so thankful that you're always there with us. Amen. Mm. Lord, help us to do the right thing, even when it's tough. We know that uh, sometimes what you ask us to do is the unpopular thing to do, but we know, Lord, that when we ask you, you'll give us strength and, uh, and the right thoughts to do the right thing. Thank you that you love us, and thank you that you're such a big God. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, have a fantastic week. Thank you so much, Darby, for those games. I think we're going to maybe give that another go, and I'm yeah. definitely on to beat you with my frog. Uh, I hope you guys um, have fun playing with your frogs and have a fantastic week. Remember, we're all praying for you and your families for good health, good safety, and remember, be kind to your mums and dads. They're trying to teach you. Make sure they've got some hair left by the end. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Good <laughs>All right, so we just did that so that we had a nice center line so that we can fold this leggy bit. So we're not folding it up this time. We're folding it to the middle line still. So that's why we've got the middle line so that we can fold it to the middle, but we're folding it down so that it makes a point at the bottom. Okay, squish it down. All right, and then the other one, I'm gonna fold it to the middle as well. Okay, and then we are going to, again, fold it to the middle. So this guy in to the middle. Nice and flat. And then the other one into the middle. Again, this is a bit of a finger workout. Really get to squash it down. Yep, all right, then this bit's a little bit weird, so we're gonna open it up, all right? And then we've got a middle line here. Can you see that? Yep, so that middle line there, we're going to fold this outside bit here. So imagine it is 
two halves of this one leg. So here's one half, here's the other half. We're going to fold this half in half to the center line that you just made. Just trying to see my center line. There we go. Is that it? Yeah, cool. And squash it down. All right, and then this half of the leggy bit and fold to the middle as well. There we go. Squash it down. And then you're going to fold the whole thing in half again. All right. And so then you've got like one, two, and then a big long bit folds there that you can see. All right. Now the same on the other side. Put it out flat. Fold this half in half again to the middle point that you'll have there squash it down and then this half in half and squash 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 all right and then this you can fold it in half again like that there we go so now we have like, I don't know, two rocket flames coming out of the bottom of our frog. All right, squash it, squash it, squash it. And then we're gonna turn it over. All right, hopefully your frog looks like this. If not, go back and check what you did <laughs> or didn't do. All right, and then we're going to fold it. Now it's not exactly in half. We're gonna fold it so that this bit, the nose of the frog, just has a little bit poking out. See how he's just got that bit there and then he's just got a little bit of nose poking out the top. So you're gonna fold that. And this bit's a bit hard. You're gonna try and make sure that in here it stays nice and flat and it doesn't all crumple up on itself. I'm not using really thin origami paper like I suppose I should be. So it makes it a little bit hard, but that's okay. It'll still turn out pretty good and really, really squash it down. I don't know, maybe you've got something lying around that you can use. I've got some tape here lying around because we're moving. So it's just there on the edge. I'm going to use that to squish it down and really make it nice and flat. All right, there we go. Cool. And then it looks like that. You got this bit that comes down. Okay, so we're going to fold this bit, the bottom half of the frog, this half here. We're going to fold it down in half okay so this bottom bit of the frog here fold it down in half okay and again a bit hard there's a lot of paper in between there getting my tape again and squash squash Arrgh. don't use anything that's glass please be safe. Ask your parents before you do it. All right, then we're turning it over. So your frog's going to look like this. Turning it over. And there you go. You can lift it up. All right, so there we go. Now you just turn it over. And you can lift the head up a little bit. And it makes it just bounce a bit more nicely. And then you just kind of tap on this, this bit here. You gotta kind of, yeah, takes a bit to figure it out, but don't, that's the wrong problem. Don't be discouraged, <laughs> discouraged, you'll get there. It's, yeah, and then you can have fun. Man, I've made this thing do backflips, look at that. I did a full, full backflip before, so enjoy. All right, so there you go. There is your jumping frog. So you can see if you can make your frog a stunt jumper or you can challenge someone else in your family to make a frog and see whose can jump the furthest or the highest. And if you're feeling really creative, you can paint your frog, you can put glitter on there. Just go crazy, have fun with it. So pause the video and have your fun and then head back here for our second activity. All right, see you guys later. Hi everyone, 
Whether you are watching on Facebook or YouTube, it is great to have you joining us tonight. I would like to give a shout out to Liam Evans and to Charlotte De Silva. I cannot wait to see you guys on a Friday again. So tonight we are going to be making racing frogs. I am really looking forward to doing that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But you know who frogs were not fun for? The Egyptians living in Moses' day. In Exodus 8, it tells us that there were frogs in their houses, there were frogs in their beds, and there were even frogs in their ovens. There were frogs everywhere. Now, I like frogs, they are really cute, but that is disgusting. So, let's get on to making our jumping frogs. What you're going to need is a piece of paper, and make sure you're listening carefully and watching these instructions. Um, remember, if you have any trouble, you can pause the video or you can rewind it and watch again to make sure that you get this right. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to make these now. 